The other question that she gave me is the one that comes from Elaine Mampuru. I don't know if we will be able to get through all of the questions that you wanted us to do, but we'll do our best. So I'm gonna be a bit quicker as I'm working with this question. Mampuru, Elaine Mampuru, congratulations. I know Mbali is going to give you something for sending your question through. Thank you for sending it through. It's an analytical geometry question. Let's go right into it and see what the story is here. It says to us here, the diagram below consists of two circles. The one I told you about, two circles look very, very complicated. Okay, cool. Um, which touch each other externally? Touch, very important, okay? Uh, there's a point C where they touch each other. The smaller circle has its center at O, the origin. The other circle has its center at T and minus six, okay? Um, C A is a tangent, it's a common tangent uh, which intersects the x-axis at A. C D E is a diameter to the large circle. All right, what does that look like? Well, I tried to draw it um, during the break and this is actually what it looks like. Uh, we've got a point D, which is the center of the big circle there with coordinate T and negative six. It goes all the way to E, and this is apparently the diameter to the big circle, right? The small circle has a center at the origin, which is O. The tangent, which is blue, is the common tangent to both those circles, and it's passing through point A. It's cutting the x-axis at point A, and that is where the x-axis is currently located. We are happy with what we see there. First question says, give a reason why the point OC and D lie on a straight line. Why are those lying on a straight line? There's no line that joins all of them. OCD, they're not all lying on the same straight line. We know C, D, and E are on the same straight line, but OC, we're not told this. However, we know that if we drew a line, which I'm going to draw in green, if I draw a line from O to C, that line will be the radius. And that radius will be perpendicular, right, to the tangent. And even CE is also perpendicular to that tangent. So they need to lie on a straight line because angles on a straight line must add up to um, 180 degrees. So my argument is going to be um, the fact that they have a common tangent. The small circle and the big circle have a common tangent. And tangents are perpendicular to um, the radii. Definitely very important for you to keep in that. So I'm going to say C is a common point, right? C is a common point. And then obviously that means OC is perpendicular to CE. And that means um, not OC is not perpendicular to CDE, but it's perpendicular to the tangent. Yes, perpendicular to the tangent. Ah, absolutely. Perpendicular to the tangent and even CE. It's also perpendicular to the tangent, right? Uh, therefore, OCD, right, lies on the same line since angles on a straight line must add up to um, 180 degrees, right? And they're all meeting each other at the same point. So this is actually the argument you could uh, raise when you're working with this. Radius is always perpendicular to uh, a tangent. Of course, you need to argue this. Why are you saying this? That is because the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent. So that's the reason for those two parts of saying OC is perpendicular to the tangent and CE is also perpendicular to the tangent. So OCE lies on the same line. They are all um, on the same line. All right. The next question says to us, we need to calculate the gradient of OC. The gradient of OC. Mampuru, the gradient of OC. Well, OC might look tricky because for you to work out the gradient of a straight line, you need two points. But I don't need that. Why? Because I already know, oh yeah, I do need that, but it might look confusing since you only see that you've got the coordinates of C. What about um, O? We do have that because of the origin, the coordinates there are O and O, right? So it's zero and zero, that's the coordinates of this. The origin and the coordinates of C are one and negative two. So the gradient of OC is gonna be changing Y over changing X. So it's actually minus two minus zero over one minus zero which ends up giving us something beautiful, which is uh, as good as negative two. So that's the gradient of OC. It is exactly negative two. Change in Y over change in X, negative two. Beautiful, it's negative, which tells us the line is decreasing. So we're happy to see that it's coming out negative and it happens to be two, which is a nice number. I hate fractions. Um, 4.3, which is the third part of this question. I like squeezing my work here because I want you to keep seeing what I'm writing so that you're not lost. Number three says to us here, hence, show t equals to three. We need to show that t is equal to three. Okay, now this is a tricky question, right? 
This is a tricky question. You can do it in four different ways. I'll pick one of the ways that we haven't discussed, right? The one of substituting coordinates of a point. I'm looking at point D, which lies on the same straight line, O, C, D, E. This point is a point that lies on the straight line O, C, D, E. So if I'm looking for the equation of that line, first of all, if I'm looking for the equation, right, of the line O, C, D that they spoke about, is going to be Y is M, X plus C. But it is passing through the origin. If it passes through the origin, we know for a fact that this number represents the y-intercept. And it's passing through the origin, so its y-intercept is just equal to zero. So that means this part is going to die off. I don't need to worry about c, because that line, that line passes through the origin. Okay, cool. Now, what does that mean? That means my equation will just simply be y is equal to, it's gonna be y is equal to mx. So I only need to know the gradient of that line OC, which I happen to do because we found it from number one. Like I said, geometry is a story. There's a reason why we were answering question two. It's because we knew we were going to need the gradient of OC as we attempt to find the equation of that line OCD. Therefore, the equation is going to be y equals to negative 2x. Now, after finding the equation, this is what I was talking about earlier on. If you have the equation, if you have the equation of a line or any graph in the world, you can take the coordinates and substitute for x and y on the equation of the line to figure out any unknown that you might have. So I've got an equation with both y and x. I've got a point that has got an unknown and a number that I know. So I'll take those and replace them for x and y. That will help me to solve for the value of t. Okay, let's see if it does take us to three, which is what the examiner was arguing. So I'm gonna sub point d, which is t and negative six. t and negative six. For x, I'm putting t. For y, I'm putting negative six, right? So this is going to be negative 6 equals to negative 2 times t. And if you divide both sides by negative 2, your t does in fact come out as exactly positive 3 because you're dividing both sides by negative 2, which is the solution to the third part of the question that Mampuri wanted us to look at. Beautiful question indeed. Uh, it's a very, a very awesome question. Um, the fourth part says here, now you need to determine the equation of the tangent AC. I think if you've been watching our shows from last week, to now, you know what is going to happen. We are looking for the equation of the tangent. What do you think we need to do? First of all, what do we need? The ingredients. Two things, yes. What are those things? Gradient and a what? And a point. Beautiful stuff. That This tangent is passing through. If I don't have the gradient of the tangent, what can I use? Yes, the gradient of the radius. Because they're perpendicular to each other, I'll just use m1 times m2 is negative 1 to transfer the information for the tangent, and then I can be able to find the equation of that tangent. Ah, awesome stuff. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. Okay, cool. Let's do exactly that. Let's do exactly that. I'm going to go up here. Um, allow me to be very naughty and uh, remove the answer that I wrote for number one because I want to answer this very, very um, quickly where you guys can keep seeing what I'm doing without going too far below. We are looking for the equation of the blue line. That's what we're looking for, the equation of the blue line. So like I said, the ingredients that we need, we need to know the gradient of the blue line and we need a point that the blue line is passing through. Do we have the gradient? We don't. But we know something about uh, the line OC that this blue line happens to be perpendicular to, right? We're looking for the equation of AC. So I'm going to say the gradient of AC multiplied by the gradient of OC must give us negative 1. Why? Because a radius is always perpendicular to a tangent. Therefore, um, the gradient of AC is going to be, I want to see if people will remember what I said. We already know the other one is negative 2. We found it. We found it. We found that this one is negative 2, the first one. We did find that um, the gradient of this guy is actually negative 2. So if the gradient of the first one is negative 2, what is it going to be the gradient of the other one? We said if the first one is negative, the second one is going to be positive. If the first one is 2 over 1 because 2 is as good as 2 over 1. Then the other one is going to be upside down. It's going to be 1 over 1 over 2. So that's the gradient I'm looking for. So I've got all the ingredients I need. I can find the equation. What is the equation going to look like? Oh, no complications there. I'm going to say y. Let's use the 1 of y minus y. 1, 1, small. We're going to keep changing them so that you get, uh, um, you get actually used to all of them. y minus y1 is m into x minus x1, right? What do I need? I need a point for y1 and x1. What point am I taking? I'm going to take C. I know the gradient is going to be positive half, 
and the coordinate I'm taking is 1 and negative 2. Okay, cool. So my y is going to be y. My y1 is negative 2. So negative of a negative is going to give us positive 2. Okay, beautiful stuff. Equals to the gradient. What's the gradient that we have here? We know the gradient is 1 over 2. And what is my x? My x value from c is 1. So I'm actually having x minus 1. That's the substitution of the point uh, minus 2 and plus 1. And the substitution of the gradient, which then will lead us to y plus 2 equals to half of x um, minus half. And then we uh, do which craft maths? Take 2 to the right or subtract 2 on both sides. You end up with half x minus half minus 2 is going to be minus 5 over 2 if I am not wrong because it's minus 2 and a half. The examiner is um, going to award you for this because the solution is correct. Yes, minus 5 over 2. Okay, beautiful stuff. Okay, cool. Um, yes, yes, not really. I am actually wrong. It's minus 2 and minus... Okay, let's get that. Minus 2 minus uh, half is 0 0.5. Beautiful people. It's minus 5 over 2. I'm right. Yes, I'm right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Right. I thought maybe my math is running away from me there, but it's actually correct. So we're happy to see that. Absolutely exciting stuff indeed. So that's the equation of that line which they wanted, which is the line AC. Okay, the follow-up question says to us here, we now need to calculate the coordinates of E. Calculate the coordinates of E. Find the coordinates of E. Where is E? What's happening at E? What do we know about E? Right, let's look at it. Okay, E is... On the circle, it's a point on the circle with unknown coordinates, right? What do we know about it? Well, we don't know much except the fact that since we know the coordinates of D, which is the midpoint of the circle, and we're looking for the coordinates of E, we can just apply the concept of the midpoint theorem, not the midpoint theorem, but the midpoint formula to find the coordinates of E. We know C is 1 and negative 2. We know D is 3 and negative 6. We found it, and we also told about it earlier on. So what do we have? Allow me to just take that part that I need. This is what I'm actually dealing with. We have C here with what coordinates? 1 and negative 2. We have D in the middle. It's the center of the circle, the middle of the diameter. What are the coordinates? We found T as 3, and we know this is actually negative 6. We're looking for what? We're looking for E, which is unknown. So it's the X value here at E and the Y value at E. We don't know that. So we are reversing the midpoint, the reverse calculation of the midpoint. How does it work? It says the x coordinate at the midpoint, which in this case happens to be d, right? d is the midpoint. So the x coordinate at the midpoint is equal to the x at e plus the x at c divided by 2. And the y coordinate at the midpoint, how do you find it? Well, the y coordinate at the midpoint, which is point d, will be the y value at e added with the y value at c divided by 2. Reverse midpoint, no complication, grade 10 concept. What is the y, What is the x value at D? It's 3. x at um, E is unknown, but we know for a fact that the x value at C is 1. And this must be divided by 2. I want to find x. I don't like that division by 2. How do you undo division? The opposite of divide is multiply. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides. I'm undoing division by multiplication. This leads us to something beautiful, which is going to be x plus 1. On the right-hand side, I've got x plus 1, and I have 6 on the left-hand side, right? Because the twos cancel out on the right-hand side. And when I subtract 1 on both sides, you are minusing 1, right? You minus 1 on both sides, you'll end up with 5. Most people say you transpose 1 from plus to the left, it's going to be minus. So you're going to have 6 minus 1, which is going to give you an x value of 5, right? Now let's go to the y coordinates. We now know x is 5, the y coordinate. The y coordinate here, yd equals to y at uh, e plus y at c over 2. So y at d is minus 6. So I've got minus 6 equals to y at e. Um, the y value at e is unknown, right? And the y value at c is negative 2 over 2. Once more, we hate division by 2. We are looking for y. Algebra, simple algebra. If you write the first line, you understand analytical. But if you can find the value of y, the problem is not analytical geometry. It's now algebra. Right, the twos cancel out, 2 and 6 gives us a product of 12, which is y minus 2. You add this time, oppose subtraction by adding 2 on both sides, or do which craft mats. Take 2 to the left, it jumps, and then it changes. When things jump, things, and they change signs from negative to plus, you'll end up with minus 10 as the y value of e, which means the coordinates of e examiner are just 5 and negative 10, right? Um, is this how... The only way we could have done the question, no, it's not. After finding 
that x is 5. This is just me adding more value, right, to your education. If I knew that x value at um, e is 5, if I knew that x value is 5, remember that old equation, that old equation of the straight line, that line we did find, the one of 2x, the one that goes down, the line OCD, we know its equation was y equals to minus 2x. Since we had find that the x value at e is 5, after finding that I didn't need to do what I did using the midpoint to find the uh, y coordinate, I could have just said y is minus 2 and then I replace that x value of 5 to end up with minus 10 because it's the same straight line. It's the same straight line. So I could have just used that equation of that straight line and replaced the x value we found of 5 to find the y value of minus 10 by just replacing that 5 in the equation of that line OCDE, which is happening to pass through everyone in this question. Very beautiful. No complications at all. Substitution is an important skill you learned in grade 8 and grade 9. Use it when you have to use it. Right. Okay, now the other part of this question um, says the following to us. We just found E. It says now determine the equation of the circle that is passing through A, C, and E. Right. The equation of the circle that is passing through A, C, and E. I don't know if we will have time to find the equation of this. I'll just tell you what you need to do, Mampuru, and then you can then do exactly that. They say it's passing through A, it is also passing through C, and it's also passing through E. Look at A. So this circle they're talking about passes through point A. This circle they're talking to you about passes through point C, and it also passes through point E. Oh, yeah, I see what is happening. Turns out we can't find it without any complications. Now that circle, that is going to pass through all those points. First of all, you need to understand something very important. We're going to need to find the coordinates of the other point. Let me just do this quickly in one minute. Uh, let's see if we can actually be able to forge our way around this. This question has a point here, right, which is A. It has a point which is C, and it has a point which is E here. I'll give you ideas of what to do. We know C is 5 and something beautiful, which is minus 10, right? But what we know is if you draw a line from A to C, this is A, this is C, right? Um, and you draw it again there, and you come back here, you're going to get what we call a right angle triangle because the other one comes from the tangent. CA is the tangent and CE is uh, the diameter, so they're perpendicular to each other. But if I have to draw a circle around these, it's going to look something like that. This is analytical geometry coming into action now, beautiful people. The circle is going to look like this, right? It's going to look something like that. Why am I saying this? Well, because what we need, I was looking for the white color actually, but then uh, I hope you guys can follow the argument here and you'll be able to work on this, right? Okay, fine. So this will be the center of your circle, right? This is going to be the center of your circle, which you can find after finding the coordinate of A using the equation of that particular um, AC that we found earlier on. And then you find the midpoint of this because the diameter will always be uh, subtended at 90 degrees of the circle. So this is going to be where the center is going to come from when you do the midpoint of AE. And then, of course, if you find the length of this, you'll be able to find the radius of your circle. And then you can be able to give the examiner whatever the equation of the circle that they were looking for. Okay.